Okay, so now that we understand oxidation numbers and we understand the fact that the electrons are really what we're worried about, now we're going to talk about what's called a voltaic cell, also known as a galvanic cell. Now, a galvanic cell is basically another, another name for a battery. Because really what we're doing here is we're setting up two little cells that are going to transfer electrons back and forth between them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the basics of a galvanic cell and then I'm going to show you how I, I'm going to give you a bunch of definitions to know. The definitions are the most important part of this, but you really should know how this all works to be able to better identify what the other how to apply those definitions. So there's a couple things that we we need to talk about. These little metal things on the ends are what are called an um These little things on the ends are what are called electrodes, these metals. And basically, you've seen this before. They, if you've ever plugged in anything, they're the two little prongs that go into the cord. They're your electrodes. What they're doing is they're pieces of metal that are conducting electricity. They're either taking in electricity, meaning taking in electrons, or they're releasing electricity, releasing electrons as they're going through. Now, one of these substances is called your cathode, and one of these substances is called your anode. So um, we talked about oxidation and reduction. So one process that we're talking about is a loss of electrons. So if you look down here into these two spots, you'll notice that they are identifying whether or not the substance is losing electrons or it's gaining electrons. Now this guy is losing electrons and then therefore this is your anode. Okay, so we know that um, loss of electrons happens at your anode. You can see that here the copper is gaining the electrons and you can see that because the electrons are going into the copper and so this guy is called your cathode. Yes, like a cathode ray tube and you're like, what, what is that? Uh, it's what TVs used to be made out of. Before your time, people, before your time. Okay, so cathode and anode. So your cathode is where you're gaining electrons and your anode is where you're losing electrons. This thing in the middle is what is called a salt bridge. Now chemists aren't very creative, so it's literally created from a salt, a salt, an ionic compound, and it's a bridge between the two cells in the uh, in the galvanic cell. Okay, so you've got like the left cell and the right cell, and the salt bridge is what bridges the two sides. Now without the salt bridge, this reaction does not work. Okay, and the reason for it is if you're taking electrons out of one side and putting electrons in on the other, you're going to end up with this imbalance. And so what happens is you can see the electrons are flowing through the salt bridge. And these positive ions are going to the other side to balance it out. Without the salt bridge, the electrons will actually stop flowing because there's nothing to replace anything that they're taking away from these solutions. And then as you can see it, these electrons are coming up through our wire. So our electrons are passing in this direction. Remember E minus is the symbol for electrons. So the electrons are passing in this direction and flowing down through the wire. And this thing in the middle is just like your meter. It could be a light bulb. I don't know how to spell. It could be a light bulb. It could be a meter like it is here which actually measures the electrons. It could be any number of different things. Okay, so again Electrons are lost at the anode. They go up the wire through the meter or whatever you're doing to measure the electron movement down to the cathode which is gaining the electrons and then some of those negative ions from the cathode side are going up into the salt bridge over back to the anode side and it's a continuous loop and it just goes around and around and around and around. Okay, and that's a basic cell and that's how, that's how a battery works. A battery sends energy out one side in through the other and and there's a little salt solution on the inside. It's usually an acidic solution. It's on the inside, which allows the electrons to transfer back and forth. This will eventually run itself out. Eventually, there will be no more electrons available to pass back and forth, and that's when you know your battery has died because the electrons have run out. Now, a, a rechargeable battery is a totally different scenario, So, but we're going to, outside the co scope of this class, we're not going to talk about that. Okay, now let's focus in on these, uh, these 
definitions that are the, the main component of what you need to know from this section and this podcast. Okay, the anode. The anode is the electrode where the oxidation occurs. Now, I realize that we haven't actually yet defined what oxidation is. Well, oxidation is the loss of electrons. Okay, so anytime substance loses electrons, that it is undergoing oxidation. The oxidation, the word oxidation comes from oxygen. So it used to mean anything that gained oxygen was being oxidized. So, but now we realize that it's electron movement. So anything that lo loses electrons is oxidation. Anything that gains electrons is reduction. So the cathode, which is what gains or gains electrons, are undergoing reduction. So any of the metals that are there are gaining electrons, they're undergoing reduction. The salt bridge is a salt solution connection that allows ions to flow between the cells. And really that's all it does, is it, it allows those ions, it allows it to replenish the electrons that were lost. The oxidizing agent. Okay, now this one is where people usually get confused. So there are two definitions here, oxidizing agent and reducing agent. These are important because they're the opposite of what you think they are. So the oxidizing agent is the substance that takes in the electrons. Well, that would be gaining. So therefore the oxidizing agent is the substance that's being reduced, okay? It's causing oxidation in something else. It is the agent of oxidation, it is the agent of change. So the oxidizing agent is a substance that takes in the electrons, being reduced. The reducing agent is the substance that releases the electrons, being oxidized. Okay, So if something is undergoing oxidation, it is reducing something else, and so therefore it is the reducing agent. So if it's being oxidized, it's the reducing agent. If it's being reduced, it's the oxidizing agent. So they're kind of opposites to whatever the process is that's going on. And then lastly is something you might see or the words might pop up and I just put it up there just in case they ever do is something called cell potential. And the cell potential is the measurement of how many electrons can flow between the electrodes. This is how you know what the voltage is on a battery. So this comes up to voltage. So like a 9 volt battery produces 9 volts of, ele of electrons flowing from one side of the terminal to the other side of the terminal. That's how you know what the voltage is. Um, your battery in your car produces about 120 volts. So you know that little, if you've ever tested a battery on your tongue, a 9 volt, and it's get that tingly sound, feeling, well that's only 9 volts. Imagine 20 times more power and that would be, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, imagine however much more power, 12 times, 14 times, I can't do the math in my head right now, more power and that would be what the a, a car battery. That's why it's, they're so dangerous and but you need a lot of energy for a car. So that's all the definitions you need to know for uh, electrochemistry. Um, now you go to study and these will appear on the final and the quiz some form or fashion. Make sure you know, like be able to identify in a chemical reaction how the oxidation number and the oxidation and whether or not something is being oxidized or reduced are connected to each other.